Welcome. This is the August 27th Jail and Zones production user call. We have Carlo, Tara, Jan, Dan, Nick, Jamie, and myself, Michael, so far. And just a reminder, there are upcoming events in these circles. Euro BSDCon next month in September, the Open ZFS User and Developer Summit in October in Portland, Oregon, and the FreeBSD Summit. Note that they've called it not the Vendor Summit, Storage Summit, you name it, it's just a summit. That will be a bit of a rinse and repeat from last November's summit at NetApp, and it was a great event. So do check that out, especially if you're in the area. Let's dive right in. Tara, you have some ideas for a pod map, perhaps some questions. Um, yeah, I'm starting to cooperate with uh, with Doug uh, on the testing phase. So the testing phase, as a reminder, will be across all September and the beginning of, of October. Um, so there are a couple of things that are on my to-do list. Uh, one is the um, reducing the size of OCA image. So as as you know, there is no official OCI image. So I created some. Uh, sorry, there was any question. Someone had some noise. Maybe it's background noise. All right. So yeah, basically one of the things in my to-do list is to reduce the size of OCA images. At the moment, I'm creating the images from the full distributions. And I made them available on a um, Quayio repository. Um, but that too big. So I'm trying to provide with some reduced images for, for the potential developers out there and maybe foster a better uh, a better building time. And the other thing I'm, I have on my to-do list is to Make sure that at least one automation is feasible with Podman. Um, I believe, I mean, I traditionally use Danceable and I believe it's one of the most popular um, way to automate tasks. Um, so I tried and I found a bug recently in the last few couple of days. I'm trying to coordinate with uh, um, with Doug because I don't know where the bug stands. Um, I I believe it's an uncaught, uh, something uncaught on the Ansible side, but I wanted to be hundred percent sure is the expected behavior on uh, on Podman returning null instead of a of a dictionary, and because I'm expecting uh, um, I'm expecting so sorry. I'll, I'll come to the to the messages soon. I'm expecting a bit of pushback from from the Ansible folks. Ah, oh, so Jan is blessed with some you experience with Ansible because you Go can ahead. return a dictionary uh, from Frotos and Ansible. The question is if you do that as an object or uh, as JSON, and with lists, is it basically one of the problems is that just because something is iterable, it's not a list. Oftentimes, that is what whips you people up. Or at the end, you just pipe it through to JSON and everyone is happy. Um, I don't know, because I, I, I found it something like literally a um, few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, so th this is the thing. The expected behavior of the Docker inspect on FreeBSD is different from the expected behavior of uh, uh, oh. FreeBSD on Linux. So on Linux, it returns an empty dictionary, while it returns a null pointer on uh, on FreeBSD. Um, I don't know where where actually the bug stands, so I'm, I, I try to clarify with uh, uh, with Doug if it's a bug, if it's a possible bug on the FreeBSD implementation side, or it stands on 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 Ansible. So the issue is with the Ansible Docker module. Yeah, we know that it apologies encounters with, an with internal the, type error. Yeah, there is exactly there is um I'm not using the Docker um playbook because it wouldn't apply hundred percent. I'm using the Podman um Ansible playbook. So if you just hold on here, um yeah, if you have exactly. example syntax, that's always helpful because visuals are. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't expecting to go actually, oh, geez. 
um, to go in detail right now. Well, no uh, worries, no rush. So, so <laughs> this is the playbook okay. in the chart, the playbook yep. I'm using. Um, and the, the problem is actually um, coming up, not when you create a new, um, a new container, but when Ansible is checking if the container already exists and apply changes. Um, as long as I have some information from Doug, I will be able to file a bug on one side or on the other, and I will let you know. Um, it looks like this repository has a plugin directory which uh, defines its own Portman image uh, and other um, modules. So um, it's fairly customized. Um, yes, it is. Um, but this is the, I believe, the one that is actually in use, uh, at least the one that I'm trying to use. If you have any other ideas or any other uh, possible mechanism for automation, just let me know because I want to make sure that during the testing phase, we are able to at least use and um, provide some example with automation. So you're not tied I to believe... Ansible? Is that accurate? Sorry? You're not tied to Ansible? You could use... Ab absolutely no. Okay. I just it. tried with Ansible first because sure. it's... I'm lazy enough, and I tried that with that first. Um, I'm also familiar with Salt Stack, uh, but I'm not familiar myself with Puppet or Chef, for example. Uh, but yeah, any would do. Uh, I just want to make sure um, that, as a group, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we provide an enterprise way of automating the tasks. So. Um... Can you drop the error message from Ansible uh, with, let's say, no dash V, one dash V, and four dash Vs into the uh, document? Oh, OK. So if you want that, no problem. Uh, uh, because you... it could be as simple as uh, fixing the modules, because the modules are part of the repository. So you could fork it, fix that type assertion or whatever it is you're tripping over, and yeah, see if uh, you get further. Yeah, sure. I will actually oh. um let me let me, let me try and do you, do you really want me to paste the the stack trace on the document? Uh, uh what I generally do is uh, make it eight point font, make it courier, or uh, basically focus on the key snippets that show the heavy lifting and the the errors. Then I generally okay. highlight the errors red. So, so okay, this is the uh, and we can circle back to that in a second. Um, okay. If I, if yeah. I paste, can you can you please um, uh, can you please make uh, it try the like... chat? You might find uh, limitations to its uh, length, but we'll we'll figure something out. So no, I mean, can you can you can you just adjust it from from a style perspective? Because is I'm this just... the one you just put in there? Yeah. The file. Got it. Okay. Just one sec. Uh, I'll work my magic as quickly as my computer will let me. So I generally yeah, no punch it down. Wait. So diff, but just for for information, diff param is expecting uh, is expecting um, a dictionary, and instead in Podman is returning null. Uh, but again, it's pretty new. All done. I'm, I sent an email to Doug and I said, is this an expected behavior from, from Padman? Because maybe it's not. And if that is fixed, it's basically useless to fork the, the repository. And otherwise, I, I go and try and patch myself and, and try to see if, if it works. So, and for the other, I'm new year. I'm not a developer. Uh, I try, I'm trying my best. Okay. You're doing great. Okay, then that said, and I hope, uh oh, Carlo, yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, uh, go ahead and maybe you two work over chat as needed. If we can come up with an answer on the call, fantastic. And we don't have to think about it again. Uh, let's see, Jamie, welcome. Uh, have you had a moment during all these fun summer holidays to look at 
Jan's two reviews on, say, JL-E separators? And broadly, how is your uh, descriptor's review coming? Uh, broadly, no one, both. But I am actually back from gallivanting around for the summer now, and I'm here for the long term. That's been going around. Yes, that, that, yeah, everyone's getting back to things. Well, cool. Then uh, there are those two. Godspeed. Um, any questions for Jan or Jamie from Jan at this time? Or well, the link says it all. Yeah, the uh, the jail dash e thing is just yeah with the with the jail names. Just got to get to that. There's there's nothing I saw in that when I took a look at it before that raised any flags. So that's just a matter of sure. me getting off my butt. Understood. Understood. We all have our priorities. Uh, crash site re regarding crash in what regard, Jan? Sorry for the uh, the Type error, the runtime type error in the Python module. Okay, cool. I'll let you two work on that. Uh, known security because, problems. Is that from Carlo or Jan? Sorry, and go ahead. It uh, looks like we that. both edited. Okay. Uh, uh, so file descriptor passing across different jail root directories uh, with Jamie present. Uh, what do you see potentially happening? Um, so the easy just make it secure option would be to prevent a file descriptor passing if a file descriptor is a directory file descriptor. But I would really hate to see that capability be lost in an abundance of cautions because um, if we can make it secure but still work so that you can go into subdirectories as if you would always use a uh, resolve beneath um, with the open system call, then it would be really useful to have the ability to send someone a directory to put something in across jails. That would be a very useful primitive one, which I was intending to use when I discovered how, uh, how broken it is. That if I did what I wanted, I would create the perfect uh, little helper to uh, exploit this uh, bug, make it from an unusual condition which is seldom seen in the real world to, oh my God, run. <laughs> because what I wanted to write is a general purpose helper to take an executable from the host, um, find it library dependencies, create open the directories, open the uh, runtime link uh, of the host, open the executable, then fork, close the directory and send myself the directories for Unix socket into the jail process and then use the uh, capsicum mode of the runtime linker to link the host executable inside the jail so that I can run commands which are not installed in the jail um, inside the jail. So uh, let's say ifconfig didn't support um, dash j, like uh, with this helper, I could run the host systems ifconfig, or I could run ifconfig on a jail, which is not uh, complete and contains only one executable and five libraries. And I could still bring in the file descriptors to the directories, the runtime linker and um, the executable and have it run if it's just a flat executable. Of course, it does not work for interpreters unless you customize your invocation. But yeah, that's what I wanted to mess with and it would be the perfect uh, precondition to make this bug ex real world exploitable to do that. So you're essentially executing binaries that do not exist in the jail from the host, thanks to... So the idea I had is um, I read the linker hints file to find the uh, list of directories to search for uh, shared libraries. Then um, with that, uh, I open all of those. Then um, for close them, and the parent process can now enter the jail. 
But before it uh, creates its shell process, it creates a connected uh, Unix socket pair and has the child, which remains outside of the jail, uh, send it the directory file descriptors and all the other file descriptors it needs so that it brings in the hosts, a file descriptor to the host's uh, runtime linker, the um, executable and the linker directories so that it can runtime link uh, um, dynamically linked executable. And that worked, but uh, I found out that, yeah, nothing prevents you from you walking out of the uh, library directories and all across the root file system of a real uh, host. And then I looked at that and found that there's an issue that it doesn't even have to be a host, a directory uh, from up. It, enough if it's a directory file descriptor from outside the jail's uh, root directory because the uh, file system escape protection works by comparing the uh, V nodes. And if you don't encounter your root directory along the path do, uh, doing cd dash dash, uh, sorry, cd dot dot, uh, then you never compare against your root directory along that path, and then you can just go everywhere unless you enter the, your current jail's root directory and try to leave again. But an attacker wouldn't be kind enough to always do that, so um, yeah. Uh, Jamie, any thoughts or observations or concerns or? Um, yeah, this is, yeah, this is the whole thing where you can make two sub jails with different root directories, pass file descriptor with them and do a jailbreak. It, I think and, the answer to this is messing with the descriptor passing code where the new descriptor, the, the new process needs to get not only the descriptor, but it's associated uh, change root and jail restrictions. I don't know uh, if there's a bug file for that offhand. There probably is, there should be. Uh, I think there are two closely related bugs open on bugs.freebsd.org for it. Okay, so yeah, there's two of them. That's not surprising. And uh, yeah. Uh, let's segue to the next one, which may be one in the same. Carlo, you found yeah, so a I bug to... for escaping. <laughs> Go ahead. Have an idea on how to prevent this. So have in mind, I have not looked uh, into VFS code, so I don't know if this is uh, possible. But uh, would a solution be to just uh, remember the uh, root uh, V node of the file system where the directory was opened, uh, so that uh, when you uh, look at uh, uh, whether it's whether it reached the jails uh, root directory, you wouldn't actually look at the re uh, jails root directory, but rather the uh, directory's root directory. That way, uh, if you pass a uh, directory file descriptor from one jail to another and try to go up, you can only go up to the other jail's root because it, it has given you the file descriptor which can only go up to its root. Uh, and uh, also the resolve beneath would then, when you open a directory, you would set itself as uh, the root. So you cannot go above it. I don't know so if that would be things. And when you... Uh, open uh, a directory that is uh, relative to another directory would just copy the vnode, uh, root vnode pointer. And that would so, behave, right. I think. Right yes, now, that, that sounds um, like uh, right, the same thing, right? Maintainer. So right now, o uh, underscore resolve underscore beneath is a flag to the open system core uh, or open add. It uh, is not a property of a file description. Yeah. And when you open it, you would, I don't know so, how it looks underneath, but what the... I would like to see is to okay. fix that because if you send it across, you probably also don't want them to leave that directory and attack. I don't know. As root in the other jail, if you have two jails cooperating, but one is malicious. You probably don't want this to be a path where, oh, you gave me a file descriptor to somewhere in your sl slash temp or something. 
and now because I'm super user in my uh, jail context, I'm also for uh, a super user on your um, jail file system uh, subtree. Uh, and now I get to override the other genes, I don't know, root uh, slash dot profile. Yeah, that makes sense. But, I mean, if you uh, pass a, root, a file descriptor to another jail that can do root things, you know, you presumably want that. You pres you probably don't want that to really, and you can't really run a jail without super user inside of it. You can because all of the FreeBSD RC.D scripts uh, will explode if you run, try to run them without super user because SU is unusable. Uh, because even if you have UID zero, it will fail because it will try to save the user ID again, which will fail because it's not a super user. Uh, if you disable super user for that jail, jail wide. And now you're out of luck and you can't run any of the existing startup scripts. Um, of course, you could write your own, so technically it works, but it's not ready uh, to be used like that. Okay, but and what if you open the directory and you explicitly say that you do not want the uh, anybody to be able to leave that directory? Right now you can't do that. Yeah, but I'm suggesting uh, there be a way, like a flag uh, that is similar to the resolve beneath yes. where you set and the root beta. That's, exactly. that's what I would like to see as a capability in the kernel. So we are an FCMTL to set that flag, similar to the close exec flag or, or blocking flag. And so then uh, the file descriptor the would have that flag set it, on the descriptor anywhere you, you put it. can't unset it. Okay. So you can only and, set uh, this like on a file descriptor. You can never remove it because similar or how uh, file descriptor ceiling works on memory descriptors. What about uh, you opening uh, a directory that is relative to the other directory? It should inherit that flag, right? Uh, uh, yes, and it should be locked into itself so that it's strictly monotonic. Uh, the capability gets weaker every time you open a subdirectory. The new directory cannot go into its parent directory. Just keep move the flag, but uh, don't track that because if you track it, I don't think that I'm, I couldn't come up with use cases where you want someone to be able to lose the old file descriptor and then regain an equivalent one in this kind of use case. Instead, uh, it's more useful to be able to have someone create a directory and then enter that and potentially lock themselves in to that directory by closing the old file descriptor. If you want to go out, well, keep the other file descriptor around. And the other problem is that if you do that, you have to track all of the parent-child relationships and lifetimes, which, uh, yeah, it be dragons, and it will probably um, introduce a painful new overhead to the VFS. So we would burden down the normal usage if we track all of these lifetimes uh, with an exotic comma case. OK. Uh, about, is, uh, yeah, it is. Uh... I understand, but uh, I'm uh, curious, is there a problem with the idea I proposed, uh, like where you track the root directory for a for any directory open? Is it even possible to be? Uh, uh, what uh, happens when you, uh, at this point, when you unlink that directory, when you unmount the file system hard? So there are annoying corner cases here by having yeah. this effectively pointer, uh, you can run into problems with lifetime mismatches and locking, uh, whereas just setting a flag which is local to the file descriptor uh, should introduce a lot less issues and solve the issue. 
what what happens if you unlink a directory uh a parent directory for a directory you called uh a file descriptor to um because to unlink it it has to be uh, empty so you have already deleted everything inside of that which so it's also unlinked uh, otherwise you can't run rmd yeah and then you have this directory you can't add to it i don't know if you can still read it but basically the uh, i know it gets unlinked on this but it still exists as a v node so the i node is preserved and so on but wouldn't that be the same case as the one um, that this will be? Or the Yes, API? but it took a lot of time to get that right. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, I understand then, it's a finicky code <laughs> with a lot of cases. Yeah, you add queries, new uh, crashes, uh, race conditions, and uh, other exploitable conditions. Uh, in our code, so I would like to avoid doing that. But in theory, your idea of tracking the uh, root v node basically of the jail which originally created the file descriptor is in a lot of ways the obviously correct thing to do. But I don't think that in this condition, this obvious Unix style just do what you would expect Unix to do. Uh, behavior is the useful one. Because if you don't trust the other JS super user uh, completely, you cannot uh, share any uh, directory file descriptor with the jail because the same attack I uh, a few minutes ago uh, outlined against the host would still work against the origin jail. So if I have this yeah. is a kind of IPC mechanism where I give you a directly a script to run and expecting you to put the output in there, and I want the output back, but I don't want you to be able to do arbitrary things to my file system. Yeah, th that's why I proposed also you be able to yep. like uh, lock it down to itself, so it is it's not mm -hmm. tracking from its uh, uh, jails root, but mm -hmm. it it would set itself as uh, the root, so it cannot go uh, above itself. Yeah, and setting then you itself as the as uh, basically the root that would be the useful behavior, but I think it would be as expensive as tracking the the jails root uh, VFS node. So, um, yeah. Just having the always basically force the uh, re resolve beneath behavior flag would, I think, be easier to implement and still solve what I want. And, uh, the system to not lose as a feature because just removing the ability to send any jail descriptors across, uh, sorry, any file descriptors across a jail boundary, yeah, that would be annoying. Yeah, and and you one have of the realistic uh, uses, uh, I noticed where this the condition to exploit this exists uh, is if you share a nullfs mount. So one of the cute, hacky ideas, which is described in multiple places in blog articles and so on, is instead of, let's say you want to run your normal web application, something like a Nextcloud, where you have a web server, a application server, in this case, PHP, fast CGI, and a database server. And normally you would have to bind your uh, PHP uh, FPM, to a TCP socket and then your database to TCP socket and make them available. Now, now you have to deal with authentication across jails and uh, your um, database and your fast uh, CGI are now exposed to the network in some fashion, at least locally between the host and its jails. Uh, 
or even to the outside world if you bridge it or something within it. Whereas if you just bind it to Unix sockets in uh, uh, shared nullfs, not just is it, is it not exposed to the network, you also get to use um, the PID uh, system calls. So uh, that, for example, um, Postgres can be configured to authenticate by client uh, user ID so that you don't need passwords, which is a really neat configuration. But if you compromise a pair of jails connected in that way, let's say you uh, are able to exploit both the uh, Postgres and the Nextcloud uh, jail, you automatically right now gain a reliable exploit against the host. Jan, so did you have the an example? You have two cooperating jails, which are pre-configured for the others to share a nullfs. You can immediately exploit that. Hmm? Jan, did you have an example of was it memory related or VFS related sticky bits that vaguely behave like you're describing? Uh, yes, and uh, Carlo uh, referenced my uh, comment about yeah, this. Okay, good. Okay, cool. So, Thank you. Uh, here's my comment. Uh, Just so it's... Um, yeah. sorry, I may have missed it. In the uh, chat. So here, okay. oh. this is my comment, and this is Carlo's comment underneath. Uh, looking... So... Cool. Thank you. Uh, got it. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, okay, anything else related to that at this time, or shall that just percolate in the back of your heads till we figure out the right solution? Here's another, uh, the other one of the PRs. That I know of. Okay. And by comment, I kind of mean link, but we'll be fine. Okay, well, anything else at this time or shall we call it good on that topic? And- uh, Call it good, but- Nick, any topics? Yes, but Jan, it sounds, what? go ahead and finish that thought. Maybe we should just bring, basically bring this to the attention of the uh, release engineering and security teams. Do we have a canonical uh, bug report to bring to them or is it still an aggregate? I don't think there's one canonical one. Okay, should there but be? The oldest one I think is the last link up. So jail is keeping via jail friend in LFS. Ah, got it. Uh... I would like to bring it to their attention with a solution though. <laughs> Understandable. But well, I'm not uh, familiar enough with the code coffee. to um, assume that I improve the situation by tinkering that deeply in the VFS and shared subsystem. And nobody else has stepped forward. Oh, here, uh, here's one which is already assigned to the SEC team. So we have at least three. Okay, well. Ah, uh, that's out. That's been done outside our control. And this is all public information, so it's not like we're talking deep. No, no, uh, it has been here. for uh, yeah. over Here's... a year now. So okay, that's why. Let's take a look at that one. What you got? Come this here to... is the. The proposed fix is truly the nuclear option of not allowing bind ah. to be used at all so that you can't even bind a socket, hmm. which sidesteps the issue of sending anything over the socket because you cannot address each other through the file system namespace, but it does nothing uh, if you um, bring an already connected socket into the jail, which 
the kernel lets you bring in connected sockets into a jail. Uh, and it doesn't do anything special for Unix sockets. So if you, but, but this would then require that you have at least the ability to create sub jails. Does that you? That, that seems like a band aid. Hmm? <laughs> this is, uh, this is the behavior they originally observed by blocking this really useful feature of sharing a null FS between jails to share part of the Unix socket namespace so that, that you can bypass the normal uh, TCP IP namespace and all of the problems which come with making something uh, addressable via an IP address. Uh, instead, making it oh. addressable via a directory uh, containing a socket. Look who commented. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yep, yep. Well, we now know. So you've been tracking this. Thank you for that. Are those reviews uh, meaningful? I see two of them that they posted. Or are they not? Are they bandages, as you put it? And um, they fixed this here fixes the problem by making them possible to create the precondition for the exploit, ignoring the situation where you don't even have to go through the file system to create it, but it blocks the ability to go through the file system to create the precondition, which is enough unless you have the ability to create sub -jails. If you have that, you can create two sub -jails with in different root directories, uh, and then you can run the same exploit again. Uh, so yeah, binding uh, to a name in a directory is not required to exploit this problem. But it's the obvious way to do it. Would it be more impactful if, uh, for example, I did a proof of concept uh, that exploits this and uh, um, the code on the uh, bugzilla? Uh, would they? They already it? have a, a proof of concept source code attached to the uh, last API I linked, um, oh. but um, of course it's a proof of concept. It's not a. I don't know. Drug paste the um, root, uh, paste the host SSH private key to uh, stand out. Maybe that's what you have to do to get the attention. Yeah. To have a jail.conf and then a little helper tool to run and suddenly, or, or yeah, write to uh, rc.conf or whatever. The host wants. Yeah. Yeah, weaponizing that would probably get attention. Maybe uh, put it on your blog and uh, send it to the editors at Phonix so we can all enjoy the popcorn. I, I'd rather so, just send the, it directly to the security. Yeah, of course. So uh, that said, do think I about wasn't what uh, being like. serious about that in case uh, that got lost across uh, the call. You have a what related to that? Hmm? You have a what? A t-shirt design slogan no. for that? I was just joking that if you send it to Linux Tech Media to uh, here and to FreeBSD publicly, we would finally get attention to this issue. Oh, well, yeah. But that's the Not no way of dealing with it. Just joking. Sorry. Cool. Uh, so yeah, do try to think outside the box on how we can fix that efficiently. You mentioned there might be ways to have very draconian checking that would slow down everything else. So that's not good. Um, I assume a jail process is flagged as being jailed such that any such draconian oversight could be limited to jails, but it might produce overhead. I don't know. Anyway, that's way above my pay grade. So uh, any other topics? I have some simple, silly questions about package base, but that's just my problem, not yours.
Ah, Jan, you have a review. Tell us about that. Yeah, review. that's the review to uh, for the fi fix and with the reproducer as a review. Review, if I can type that. All right. So this stuff has just been lingering. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't type. Uh, uh, Um, have we touched on that one today? If not, let's take a quick peek. It is number D three four da da da. From the same author. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. just the same content as a review. Got it. Okay. Well. Just for our link collection. At least they're doing, yeah, exactly. They're doing their homework. That's cool. Well, okay. Um, if we're not satisfied with the reviews to date, let her rip. Good luck. I would have no idea how to fix that. So good luck. Uh, so that said, uh, W there. These are the silly games. Oh, it didn't even do it. I wanted to link everything at once. Yeah, fine. There it is. Okay. Um. Docs. Okay, uh, if anyone has questions for this lightning round on package base, great, thank you. I mean, answers to my questions. Um, does anyone know what kernel generic MMCCAM is? Yes. What is that? It's a kernel configuration with the MMC, so basically SD card, a CAM module built in. Ah, got it. Um. It's common on ARM-based so systems. So that's another driver which uh, that, where the MMC, an alternative MMC driver, which uh, works with a CAM subsystem. So it looks uh, SCSI-like uh, instead of being a, bl a block storage device, which is unrelated to anything else. OK. On your uh, nifty jail uh, package-based jails, have you noticed it being pulled in by some obscure dependency when you do your um, no. exclusions? Okay. Well, but we, I filter I that is. out which, uh, anything which is kind of related in my Me too, jails. and I got that. So that's hence my question. I very uh, specifically got, uh, I filtered out you, and um, only got that, which is bizarre. Go ahead. Well, do a package delete and see what else gets deleted. Then you sure. should see the uh, conflict. Ooh, <laughs> speaking of which... How can I check those dependencies before I even install a single thing? Can I just say, hey, yo, mm -hmm. what are the pa dependencies for package foo? You can just do package, package install. Well, and exactly. And it'll confirm before you Dash complete and install the list of stuff that's going to get installed. Yep. Is package install has a dry run mode. Oh, dry run. Oh, great. That's more likely because I do have a yes that's in there such that uh, what's the flag for dry run? Minus N, N package dash install. As it should be. Okay. Uh, well, I have way, it. I it always four. asks to confirm, even if you don't do the minus N. Uh, Not where, if you pass it dash dash yes. I put yes in the config file. So it's like, yep, it's yesing the heck out of it because I if it's supposed to be wow. hands up. So, okay, well, perfect. So, uh, for install uh, dash N. Perfect. I will tinker with that. That's exactly what I'm after. Uh, for example, also, if I do. Jan, your direct jail syntax, I get like UFS lib32, despite excluding lib32 and ex despite excluding a kernel. It's then you've broken the, uh, the filter a lot. Possibly, possibly. Uh, it was strange that it was just like those two stragglers as opposed to, gee, all kernel modules, which would, all kernels, which would make it seem, anyway. Or dry, dry run, thank you. Um, uh, so I see that there are several kernels installed, which is great if you don't filter anything out. How does one actually choose one? Do you have, a, I'll, I won't even speculate how it's done. Uh, you install just the one you want, but if you don't install the default kernel from the package set, you may have to set a few loader conf variables so that it looks in an other directory. Exactly. Because um, yeah. so it has like three have... kernels. <laughs> If you want to really be able to boot of that, uh, I think you have to put something like 
this, but don't quote me on that. Yeah. Um, for example, on a current system, I think this would do what you want if you want to run a kernel config, which is closer to a release kernel, okay. so that you don't have the invariant and, and uh, debug stuff in there. Exactly. It. But uh, I'm not certain if that's the exact syntax, so just yeah. grabbing for no. stuff. It's a, it points me in the right direction. I thank you for that because, yeah, it's like, oh, so I have three control. Which one am I running? Okay, cool. Love it. Maybe. Um, the safe option is to uh, still install the real one so that if you don't get it uh, right, you can still uh, boot your system and you haven't broken your system. Correct. You're just booting the slower uh, debug kernel. Correct. Um, and then you can try again until you find the right loader conf option. Well, and I do, uh, like I said, have all kernels, but it, and I, so I guess the menu has the generic. option of selecting a kernel. So oh, it does. You would have Which to look. So yeah, the boot menu. Uh, oh, right. Oh, but you, yeah, okay. And uh, you just have to find what the menu does uh, when you select the kernel. I have not used that. Cool. In the Lua code. Uh, so I can cool. tell you that it works with with the uh, menu, but that requires you to interactively wait for the right time window to use the boot menu, okay. which is, of course, not an option for, for production. Cool. Um, does anyone know, for the love of good Italian coffee, why uh, this, the, the VM goodies, this this uh, library of handy VM image creation tools really, really wants to be executed in source.conf and has tricks to insist that it's executing uh, script is there. Uh, I will investigate, but it just like, no, it seems like a completely it has to pointless source itself back hard requirement. In or part of itself, maybe? or it uh, really, really relies on its working directory and stuff, or uses its. Uh, zeroth argument uh, to derive some other uh, path, which I don't know what. Uh... Yeah, the operative word is really, really words, plural. Um, OK, I will investigate. It was like very frustrating, so I had to dance around it in ridiculous ways. Uh, Eva, you have some updates, but you don't have audio. Let's take a quick look at these. Uh, jail host target build complete operational brief BPP to begin. You, Context, if I was doing some VPP uh, testing work or planning to VPP updates. Load generator tooling with DPDK, starting a new Ansible playbook, reviewing present offerings on Prometheus exporters, possibly creating a new one to fill the gaps on metric collection requirements, full system coverage necessary, including Google, all the things. Pending decision, generate a pot jail template for the DPDK load general. Hmm, possibly. Uh, pot versus pod man, pod person. Any user experiences here? If I may, yes, this please. is a frequently, I'm sorry to jump in. Um, this is a oh, frequently asked in. questions that yeah. we receiving from part of the uh, community, whatever, like, whatever Podman, Bastille, or it's a jail is actually one of my most preferred way, mm -mm, apologies, of carrying jails in uh, in FreeBSD. I don't have experience to answer that, but um, we need to figure out what we want to do. Probably this is for, um, uh, this is for an higher decision if we want to sponsor something or we want to see how it's going because the feeling for everybody, um, as somebody else, Jan commented, I mean, there is low development on all these options. Um, and the only one that seems to be somehow updated is Bastille. And uh, we want to know, you know, what kind of direction we want to bat on. Is yes, Doug's for work po pod person Sorry? specifically? Well, Doug is working on OCI containers. Is that specifically Podman or Podman? Not? Podman. It is. So, Podman. Okay. so, so Podman um, is actually so. The, what I was trying to 
to say in another context is that Wait. Podman, it is actually relying on jails, but it's not really traditional jail management, which is not something, uh, I don't know what you feel about it, but I don't think it's the same that actual uh, free, traditional FreeBSD users are looking for. I mean, Podman is certainly an alternative, but it's not a traditional jail management. So Podman is part of FreeBSD. We create most of the advantages and most of the disadvantages of Docker-style containers. It, uh, so, so if that's what you want, that's one way to go. Um, it's not what I want. I'm trying to understand what people want. It's just for me, I'm I'm investing in Podman because of something happened a long time ago. Doug is in my same city of London and we happened to fix something in the past. So I just happened it to be involved in the project. But uh, what the people are asking, so some are asking for, for a more official web jail management tool from FreeBSD Foundation and don't know if this is right, or we should, in a way, foster the community to create the um, agile management um, solution. And I don't know which, I'm too new, I don't know which is the right way to do that. Okay, do we have like opinion, three things that are clearly missing? Go ahead, Jan. There's nothing technically wrong with uh, using your own jail management tooling and making it available as a port that solves real world issues. The problem here is that all the tooling we have in the ports to be available is just one way to do it. And a lot of it is it solves someone's problem and then they maintain it for a few years and then it goes away and it doesn't break, but it also doesn't move along with the ecosystem. Um, things like easy jail still work, but yeah, they are clunky. And FreeBSD has improved a lot over the last few years. And in 14.0, a lot of things came together. We now have package base. We have includes in the jail.com file format, thanks to Jamie implementing that. So now um, a lot of things which formerly busy, uh, people felt they had to, just for quality of life reasons, go out and uh, use the external jail manager can now be done with just writing it as a jail.conf snippet and including it. You can reuse snippets in jail.conf now via uh, includes by laying them out correctly in your slash etc uh, directory. Um, and it just works. It doesn't require any third party tools to be installed, just the base system and your shell scripts. And here the problem is that these shell scripts eventually will grow to become a kind of jail manager um, and it's worth making them simpler and maybe upstreaming some of those helper commands for them so that you don't need 100 lines of shell but 1 to 10. I agreed about creating some niche tool, for example, to, to do some specific so, tasks. One of the big issues which only few jail managers have even attempted to solve, but which is the, the selling feature for the Linux uh, containers is redistributing your co uh, container images between systems. There are lots of good tools for FreeBSD to create bespoke jails on each host, even almost reproducible one, but not to um, not many jail managers have a way to take a jail from one host and move it to uh, 10 others to deploy it. Uh, Pot, for example, supports it. I think Bastille has something, but they have at least their Bastille files to 
uh, which is the Docker file, not the Docker image equivalent. And pod doesn't have its own serialization format, but piggybacks on ZFS replication streams. Right. I, I totally agree with what, what you're just doing. For example, this is why I was investigating pod. Um, mm -hmm. But is there a way, maybe not now, uh, to address this or try to um, put this in a way that we can create a plan for that or are we trying to address it? One of the things, for example, is boots, is there an easier way to bootstrap thin, uh, um, thin jails? Um, and I agree is also a matter of documentation as well. Uh, if you look at the 2024-49 discussion, we actually covered the what would a initial ideas of what would a uh, ecosystem uh, what are, library slash archive slash several things look like a repository. So here I'll do a quick search here and bring us down there. Let's recap it before we have the same conversation over. So right, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's an event coming up back in the day. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. So, and I don't know why comments came back, but such is life. Okay. Um, a registry. Key value two. Let's get the latest. Um, so build the, the container OCR, images, images. Sign them. I, push um, them. Go ahead. No, I'm just. The OCI ecosystem has a um, an yeah image and image just both. Uh, an image layer, which is basically a layer task, and uh, then a distribution um, specification. Um, the OCI, yeah, this is the distribution. But their spec is, um, yeah, it's, it works for what needs to be done, but it doesn't take advantage of any unique FreeBSD uh, features. Instead, it recreates a lot of things which package, and especially now package base does, and which ZFS replication streams do. And in, a lot, in my opinion, it recreates them worse. Mm. But the reason they do it is because it works, and it ha they had to implement it from scratch because they couldn't build on top of a specific operating system because it had to work for all the reasonable Linux distributions. You couldn't assume that it, oh, you can use dbootstrap or whatever Red Hat has um, for that. And here's the image spec. Um, so these are the two, uh, the for, um, for, formats and protocols tools like Potman would use. Okay. Uh, I looked uh, at it and I would like to. What I, can we I'm undecided on what's the best way to tackle that. I think the key uh, decision to make early on is should the jails be self uh, managed or externally managed? So, do you want to just help them along to do the right thing with? Um, Packages, or do you want to externally inject the stuff into it and then treat them as dumb passive things or as a living user land? Jan, you had a comment some time ago that Bastille allows way too much control from the jail itself. Is that an accurate summary? No. I thought you said one of the Don't tools so. that's too opinionated gives just does too much from within jail, but. I could be wrong about that. I misremember a lot of things. Um, uh, I would, in this broader context, short of the repo itself, I'm just curious, what are we missing to make that easier? Uh, there are helpers that have sprouted up over the last two or so years, like the NetGraph buddy from Daniel. And Jan, you've been producing quite a few little helpers. Uh, so I guess, yeah, there is the broader discussion, but is it's continuing. Uh, 
show of hands, I think Jan, you and I at least will be in Eurobased Econ, aka the Dev Summit. Um, is there any uh, anyone else who will be there, and maybe we can discuss it there? Jamie, will you make it to uh, Dublin? Nope, nope. That's part of my uh, vacation season being over. Hmm. Stick around here now. Dancing is over. Well. That means you'll have your nose to the grindstone and great things will come out of it. Anyhow, uh, thank you, Eva, for that comment on simply, hey, little snippets. And Eva, will you right. make it and can uh, you bring your uh, uh Eva might be AV limited, but can drop an answer. Yes, VPP might. If you have facts to relay, maybe, Yana, I can help with that if you can't make it, but we hope to see you there. Uh, while Eva's answering, oh, here we go. Ba, ba, ba. Tara, I like the dot D directory. Da, da, da. Okay, so I will copy that chat. Uh, Carlo, what you got on a non-booting system? So, so uh, last week I uh, set up a machine, which I intended to use as a headless machine. I left it and booted it via, uh, what do you call it, Wake on LAN. And it just didn't boot, so I looked into it, and it ended up being an issue with the the bootloader waiting for a serial port, which the machine did not have. So uh, I found uh, the solution on some forum. The a few years ago, somebody had the same issue. Uh, so I'm just wondering uh, why is it not the default that the machine does not hang when it has no video output or uh, a serial console present. Uh, don't get me started on early Beehive and on if console where all uh, other operating systems handled it well, but FreeBSD would simply not by default give you a give you serial output unless you messed with TTYs. They finally came up with a workaround, but uh, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> so um, the question I would have, but that's not in any way jail specific, is uh, what is the what consoles are detected? The normal one is that you have either video or uh, EFI console, and potentially a serial console as well. Um, on modern systems with EFI, it depends on how the EFI behaves. Sometimes they are quite clever and present serial or the LAN synced with the video console so that you have a text mode which uh, works on both. The, that's quite useful because you can access things like the BIOS or EFI setup screens via serial and a video at the same time. Uh, and then the only disadvantage is that during the bootloader phase before the kernel takes over, you kind of see doubled output in the loader menu. Uh, but hey, that can be lived with, I think, uh, even if it doesn't look nice, but uh, you're not intending to spend a lot time, lots of time here in this small boot stage. And once your kernel has taken over, you will get uh, the system console output to both. And wouldn't because you don't use the console slash dev console as uh, a login device, it's not a problem. So instead you have one get TTY bound to the serial port and one to TTY, uh, if TTY uh, v0 and to v whatever. And with that, it just works, uh, except for the few seconds uh, between busy exiting the BIOS and going into uh, the kernel. But kernel yeah. output all shows up correctly. Um, you can force the serial console if you have one, which makes sense if you never intend to hook up a screen so that, yes, you lose the ability to use your video console as emergency access. But if you know that you're not in a position to hook up a, a screen and keyboard, then maybe it's nice to not have this garbled output at this stage. Because if you configure dual console with EFI and COM console, the bootloader output is doubled. Uh, right. so, 
uh, I, I tried with uh, EFI console and it worked, but uh, when I plugged in uh, a graphics card and booted it uh, again without uh, video cables attached, mm -hmm. it would hang again, like uh, if I did nothing. So it only worked after I set it to no console. It started mm -hmm. booting. Ooh. I may have a solution for you. Oh. Could it, yeah, okay. There are dummy dongles which just register as a full HD display as via uh, ICC uh, on the HDMI port, and you put it in, and it pretends to be an interface, but uh, sorry, a, a display. And yeah, uh, just, those are less than ten bucks on common online shopping platforms, and they're workaround for stupid operating systems and KVMs. Yep. But um, FreeBSD shouldn't be among them. Um, no, it should just boot. What, another question I have is, is it really the video output which is required or a plugged in keyboard? Uh, keyboard did not help. So if I plugged in keyboard or have not plugged it in, it did not change anything I've, if, with what I tried. Does your board have a BMC so that you can look at the console via IPMI? Uh, it does not. It is uh, a Think Center from like 2012. It's a desktop sure. machine. Cool. And that oh, we case, off I topic, don't know what but they, that's important. uh early EFI days for PCs, so it may just be stupid firmware you're fighting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh and you are welcome to discuss that further after the recording. But totally off topic. But it's all good. Uh anyway, any final thoughts before we move on? And call it a day. Great work, everyone. You've been super helpful in what I was trying to answer. Uh, anything else, or do you want the honors? Let her rip, Jan. Like and subscribe. Thank you, everyone.